Now on Kent County Tourism Television, one of the gems of this part of America is an incredible aviation museum right on the Dover Air Force Base. The Air Mobility Command Museum is one of the coolest places to visit you will find anywhere. It's one of those places where you simply say wow when you walk in. And there is so much to see and do here that no matter what your age, you will simply love a day here. If you're an aviation buff of any kind, the Air Mobility Command Museum in Dover, Delaware is simply one of the top destinations of its kind in the country. But it had very humble beginnings. We actually began in 1986 in the corner of one hangar over on the other side of the base with a C-47 airplane that had been declared unrestorable. It had been used as a target and had uh, lots of damage to it. It took us two years to restore that airplane to pretty well pristine condition. And while we were restoring the airplane, we did a lot of research and found out that the history of that airplane was as good, actually better than any other C-47 that was still in existence. So we actually have an historic gem inside the hangar right now. There are historical gems all over the 25 acres of this museum. This was America's secret rocket test center for the Army Air Corps in World War II, and it's on the National Historic Registry. This is a special place. We have uh, a large air park outside with airplanes that not only can you walk around them, but every day at least two airplanes are open so people can go inside. One of the highlights of the museum is the former Air Force II, which carried several presidents and vice presidents, the latest of which in the Clinton administration, there were lots of VIPs on this plane over the years. It is really neat to walk through as these high school students did on the day we were shooting. It's neat to imagine what kind of conversations were had on this plane, what kind of history was made. All around Air Force Two, there are some of the best examples of American military aircraft in the world. Whether it be high-speed jets or this C-54 Skymaster, which was used to take bags of coal into Berlin during the airlift. Inside the hangar, so much to see, including this B-17 Flying Fortress, which was the flying war horse of the U.S. bombing raids over Europe in World War II. Look at this. This glider is about as rare as you can get. It was used to carry troops and cargo into World War II war zones. Imagine being one of the 13 young men ordered to get into this glider and go to battle towed behind a big plane, then cut loose to glide into some field in Normandy or Sicily or Burma. About 14,000 of these were made. So many of them crashed on their first flight. Less than a dozen were left in the world. There are only two owned by the U.S. Air Force, and one of them is right here in Dover. The Air Mobility Command Museum leadership has been really progressive about making this incredible place fun for all. It's not all about facts. This is a great place to bring the kids. First, it's family friendly, it's free, it's handicap accessible. We try to teach things that are interesting and we try to make them interesting to kids. We have free flight simulators. The kids can sit down in one of our free simulators and actually have a pilot teach them how to make a landing. This isn't one like it's in an arcade where you see if you can shoot down 37 fighters. This is one, can you make an approach and land on the runway at Dover Air Force Base and walk away from the airplane? That's the kind of training that we do, and we do it in a fun way. See the runway is, is right here. The simulator is awesome, and as we walked over, 69-year-old Vietnam veteran Tom Finger was gearing up for a heart-pounding attempt to land a very large cargo plane. Seated beside him, Terry Anderson, who used to fly the big birds for many years all over the world. It is awesome to have a real C-141 pilot and retired C-5 aircraft commander in Dover sitting right beside you. Terry's about as qualified as you can get to run visitors through a simulator. It's very realistic. If you make a mistake um, in, in, in this simulator, you will crash, just as you would in the real airplane. Pull the nose up just a little bit. Pull back on just a little bit. That, that's enough, that's enough, that's enough. Okay, 204, 3, come to the right a little bit at the same time. Gear's coming down, flaps at uh, 50%. That's enough bank. Don't, don't bank any farther than that. We'll check in later to see if Tom gets that bird on the ground safely or has a big problem. Well, outside the historic hangar, visitors can go right up into the control tower. 
one of only four control towers in the United States that people can actually go into. If they're lucky enough, they will see a modern day cargo giant coming in like we did. What a view. In fact, every place you look here, there's an incredible view. Some of the best views inside the planes. You wonder what went through the minds of the young Americans on these old planes as they flew into war zones, often being shot at. On this one, every member of the 108 Air Refueling Group came to autograph her as she was retired here at Dover. There are about 120 volunteers at the museum, many of them seniors, veterans, and all of them have stories about how these planes touch the people who come to see them. Volunteer Ev Sarbeck is a retired pastor who gets just as much as he gives when he volunteers at this special place. A lot of people come here because it's an experience of history. And uh, that's certainly uh, one of the main things that happens here. You can see it everywhere you walk. Uh, and there's a lot of stories connected with some of the airplanes here. Uh, so it's fun to talk about that and people enjoy that. It was Paul George's 77th birthday the day we were shooting this piece. He was giving some kids their marching orders as they prepared to tour Air Force Two. A lot of the students come in here and they have no idea why a museum is a museum. And so we, it's up to us to impart whatever knowledge we can give them to tell them the worth of the aircraft that we've got here. Remember parents and teachers, kids love this place. Every student in this region should come here for a great field trip in my humble opinion. But there is no question that this museum and the memories that it triggers is a favorite of people who actually know what the Berlin airlift was. They know who Harry Truman was. They actually had loved ones who flew on one of these planes. People such as Tom Finger. He was a forward observer in Vietnam. That means he used to look out the window of an airplane, which was often being shot at, and wrote down what he saw on the ground to help his fellow soldiers stay alive there. Tom loves the Air Mobility Command Museum. I've been here a number of times and uh, I enjoy it. If, if, if anybody enjoys aircraft, which I really enjoy aircraft, and you come here, you can have, it's really a great place to come to. Does it make you proud to be an American this place? Absolutely, absolutely. I'm proud to be an American. I'd join again now if I, uh, if I were young enough. The Air Force might actually take Tom after seeing this. He's not a bad pilot for a simulator rookie. Uh, a little firm, but keep it down, keep it down. Spoilers, that'll keep you down. Put the nose down, uh, throttles to idle. Thrust reversers coming out. Turn very lightly with the wheel to keep you in the center. And we're slowing down, 71, 69. Easy, you're gonna make me sick. I'm, I'm getting sick. <laughs> well, I, I okay. can't stop that wig wagon. Yeah. <laughs> good, you, good, you do, good landing, excellent landing. <laughs> yeah, no, I have a success rate of about one in four uh -oh. that of, of people who have never flown before because they can't learn from their mistakes fast enough to land it the first time. Wow, what a ride. The Air Mobility Command Museum at the Dover Air Force Base. This is a must visit. You will have a blast. It's free, it's fun, it's open just about every day of the year except Mondays and major holidays. For directions, you can go right to the website, but hey, if you can find the Air Force Base, you can find the museum. Go see the Air Mobility Command Museum. It'll make you feel darn good about being an American.